You've seen within some of the tutorials uh, how I've made use of the history stages and referred to something that I call workflow streaming. Workflow streaming is built into all of the Craig's action sets and uh, it's a pretty cool way of dealing with your images and how we as photographers like to play, uh, do things, uh, don't necessarily keep up with all of our saving. Uh, all of those different things that go into the Photoshop experience uh, is anticipated and planned for within, within the workflow streaming. So here's a image and we're going to make use of a couple of different techniques. In this case it's within the toolkit and so we'll come down to some of our color choices within the color corrective uh, area and we're going to make use of our color genies. And the color genies will give you uh, very nice tonal renderings of how they deal with the highlights and the shadows uh, differently, independently, bringing neutrality to your images, but at the same time bringing a per personality, if you will, to how the image looks. And it does that by dealing with the color tones. So this is a great opportunity for us to play with a workflow streaming and see what it can do for us. Let's start off with the Color Genie, the regular uh, treatment on that. You can see that it runs through. We get our instructions that pop up. We can deal with that and we say, yeah, that's definitely uh, snaps things into place. Our before, our after. Another element to the workflow streaming is this green for go. This is your heads up to say, hey, look here. You can go in, you can adjust things, fine tune the result, or take it off completely. Let's do that and select another one. Let's go into our scenic and press that. I haven't got rid of anything. I haven't deleted anything. I've left my layers as they were. Uh, I just went in and simply unchecked that green. So we can see with our scenic ton tone that it's really done some very nice things with the greenery here. Skin tone's a little different on here and we've kind of lost some of the uh, impact of the clouds. So again, I can either take this out like that or simply uncheck it and now go in and select, uh, in this case, let's go into our Color Genie Cool. We press play, runs through, and you can see we have a whole different uh, image style again, but still working within the neutral values that exist on this image, just changing the personality of the color tones that surround and are within the overall image. So before and after. Well, that's fine. It allowed us to carry on and look at things, but it didn't. What uh, what do we do now at this stage? We didn't save anything. We didn't do any strategic save as as we were coming along. We're going to uh, go back and make use of our history stages now within the workflow streaming. And you can see here's our original image, and here's the different uh, tonalities that we were achieving with the different color genies. They're available to us. We're going back in time, if you will, to select uh, what we liked the best. So we go through and to say, okay, what's the difference between the cold and the regular color genie and the color genie scenic? And I think I'm going to go with the cold. We're going to select that and then we're going to carry on. And uh, so we've done that within the image. And now a couple of other things we may make use of within our softening or defining. Let's go in and use our defining actions. Uh, and in this case, we're going to pick up on the flashlight. Now, I don't need to save anything to the image. I don't need to flatten it because the actions will do that. That's all part of the workflow streaming that is built into the toolkit and the other Craig's action sets. And it runs through, and this one was set so we could make some custom changes. We're just going to carry on right in. And now we simply come, get things set, and go right into our brushwork. So you see that we've gone in and we've made use of the elements that are built into that one particular action. And should we decide that we, you know, we want to see what that's like before or after, or even to come in and change the intensity of that by scaling it down as little or as much as we want. This is all built in. You're never going to be in a position where you're stuck. So that's the original and that's with the effect applied. We could follow that up, making use of a uh, softening technique, a uh, very typical way I deal with the images. Uh, so these instructions that pop up, you can read them, you can make use of them, they'll guide you in the use of the actions, and then you can simply uncheck them uh, going forward and you don't need to deal with them anymore. So we did our Velvet Soft, and now we just come in and bring back the detail that we want. The brush has been selected, uh, the size of the brush has been adjusted, uh, we've got things set up here and all we do is just bring in our detail 
on the image uh, back within this softening stage. So again, that's the softening that's being applied to the image and we can take our original image here, green for go, we can take our softening and make it as little or as much as we want. Always available right at your fingertips and as we look back in our history stages here you'll see that there's our original image and there's where we were afterwards with a little bit of brushwork, good to go there. All your history stages and the steps in the process that you made use of are contained within here in our workflow streaming. So that you always have the choices uh, available to you, uh, as little or as much, your original image always intact. And just one final stage for those that really want to have your image set up on a separate layer and keeping everything intact and having it all separate, the action sets have something called the image clone built into it. And what that'll do is we press play, cues you for a little instruction, a uh, quick shortcut tip here, follows through, and this will now go through, and if we see how we have things set, what that did was it made a copy of that image. So even if you want to ignore all the benefits of the workflow streaming and have a separate image off to the side, you can do that simply by making use of the image clone action built into uh, the toolkit there. We don't need that. We've got everything all available right here. So that's it. Uh, thanks and enjoy the Craig's action sets and what they can do for you.